3D Twento. I don't know if you wanted to comment. To ah, okay. Words. So, so there are extension uh, to this picture either in, uh, in the, the longitudinal di uh, direction where you can also parameterize uh, the rapidity dependencies. There are also extension in uh, uh, putting in subnucleonic fluctuations. So, so either those. Uh, extension will introduce more parameters, but here I'm just introducing the, the, the simplest version of this model. You may want to also stress that Trento has only spatial information. Oh, yes. And yes. that distinguishes it, for example, from IP Plasma, where you can tease momentum information out in addition to the spatial information. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, uh, as uh, Uli has commented, so in this parametric approach, we only uh, generate energy density. And uh, so, so if you want to ask what's the momentum distribution of uh, uh, initial partons or constituents, uh, we don't have that information. Okay, uh, so if there's no further question, I will move on to the next section. So, uh, so that's a brief introduction of Trento. Uh, it tells you how to go from a event by event fluctuating nuclear configuration to the middle rapidity energy depositions. So in principle, to get uh, meaningful predictions to be compared with data, you have to run through the initial condition uh, through the uh, uh, dynamical model. But even at the initial condition level, there are some things strongly correlated with uh, final state. And this, there are some interesting event properties we can study or discuss. So for the event properties, of course, uh, these are numbers that summarize uh, an event instead of looking at all the details of its geometry. For example, there are impact parameters. Uh, there are a number of participants. And remember, participants are those nucleons that uh, participate in, in, in elastic collisions. There are also a number of binary collisions, which is the total number of inelastic collisions, not the participants. So this number of binary collisions is interesting because uh, we expect the hard processes production cross-section to be proportional to uh, the effective nuclear-nuclear binary collision numbers. Uh, so there are something that's strongly correlated with final state are, for example, the energy production at uh, middle space-time rapidity. So first of all, energy should be conserved in each of the dynamical model. And if you assume that uh, there is a approximate boost invariance in the middle rapidity, then the energy you generated from the initial condition uh, is a, a good approximate for your final energy uh, per unit rapidity. Another thing that has strongly correlation with final state is the eccentricity vector, which we'll uh, define later. Uh, but, but still bear in mind that none of the above are actually observables. So to really get apple to apple comparisons, uh, usually you need to run the initial conditions through the dynamical, dynamical evolution. Before we move on, there is one interesting question. Is okay. P a universal parameter that should hold at, should be the same at all impact parameters? So currently we assume it's only, uh, sorry, I'm, let me go back. Uh, we, we assume that energy deposition is only a function of uh, local participant density. So the impact parameter dependencies uh, is built in in such uh, a functional form. So P, in principle, we don't assume it's a function of impact parameter. But in principle, P can be a function of beam energy. So we cannot guarantee that uh, such an energy deposition formula holds the same from very low to very high energies, but we assume it's independent of impact parameter. Thank you. Okay, so uh, continue our discussion of UN properties. So I picked two uh, interesting topics. Uh, one is the centrality definition. So, uh, so centrality is some handle we, we have to approximate uh, the geometry in the nuclear collisions. Uh, 
of course, experimentally, we can never really measure the impact parameter and know how much uh, percentage of the nucleus are overlapped in the collision. But we know that this uh, event activities you observe in the final state should be strongly correlated to how much of them is overlapped. The more they overlap, the more particles they produce. And by sorting the events according to, for example, multiplicities or energy deposition in the detector, uh, you can draw these quantiles uh, that gives you an indication of uh, how peripheral your collision or how, how central your collision is. So ideally, we want to do something as close as the experimental does. For example, use the final state multiplicity uh, to define centrality. But at the initial condition, you can also do a quite good job in nuclear collisions. So to define uh, centralities, uh, there are actually uh, different practice people usually do. For example, uh, at the level of initial condition, uh, the, the most realistic thing you can do is actually uh, generate the events and sort the events by the energy deposition at middle rapidity. At middle rapidity. So such a quantity will include both nuclear position fluctuations uh, fluctuations in binary collisions, and also uh, the, the gamma fluctuations which is that, that we're putting by hand. So you not only have the geometry effect, and also uh, different fluctuation effects, so it's uh, more realistic. Uh, you can also sort it by number of participants, but you are, uh, in this case, you are, you are dropping the, the additional fluctuations, and uh, you, you, in some cases, people also define centrality by simply doing cuts in impact parameter. Of course, in this case, it'd be less realistic because it contains, contains the least fluctuations. So here we see three different cases of sorting the events generated by Trento by ET and part and B. And here we are not really making a, a comparison to Alice. We are just using their data as a references to interpret what we have generated. So taking Alice as a reference, you'll see that uh, uh, for this, at least for this nuclear collisions, once we are interested in this uh, integrated quantities, uh, this central dependence is at least from zero to 7% is not so sensitive to how you no. define uh, centralities. Uh, but of course, at uh, the pre very preferable collisions, maybe larger than 80 or 90 percent, you, you do see notable differences. Because in this region, uh, fluctuation is really important and uh, it affects your centrality definitions. It's also possible that in other observables where you focus on fluctuations, particularly, you can be really sensitive to how, whether you correctly def define your centrality even for central collisions. And here, another effect I want to point out is that uh, how the uh, different energy deposition formula, basically uh, controlled by the p parameter, affects the, the energy deposition as function of centrality. So here you see this blue band is actually generated by varying Trento p parameter from minus one to one. So even by just looking at uh, uh, this uh, very integrated quantity, uh, you already get some sensitivity to uh, the way one deposit energy. So that's the energy deposition in large system. Uh, if you go to another extreme in the smallest possible system in proton-proton collisions, experimentally you also observe a, a huge distribution of uh, energy deposition. For the example, in this case, it's the Atlas measurements uh, we see an acceptance of 0.8 pseudo rapidity uh, if you standardize their energy production by the average energy production per event. Uh, you, you see that this fluctuation can have a very long tail up to six or eight times of the mean values. Uh, but you cannot explain this thing by simple geometry effect uh, because if you turn off all the uh, fluctuation effect in Trento and just plot the geometry, contribution to such a fluctuation, you'll get this uh, black curve in the figure, which is very narrow. It is only when you put in this uh, additional gamma fluctuation we talked before, 
and you, you can tune this uh, variance of the gamma fluctuation to be uh, uh, measuring units of the, uh, the mean. So you need to put in a very large gamma fluctuation in order to be comparable to the magnitude of fluctuation as measured in data. Therefore, once you get into small system or even the peripheral collisions in lab lab collisions, uh, the geometry plays less and less important role and you are completely dominated by the fluctuations you put in by hand. So that's the uh, transverse energy production. Another interesting aspect you can study in each condition is the initial spatial eccentricities. So we, we don't integrate it over uh, the transverse space, but look at more uh, detailed structure. So due to uh, finite impact parameter and the randomized nuclear position fluctuations, a typical event you will see in Trento will have this uh, a quite irregular shape uh, on the XY plane and has this local hotspot, hotspots in energy productions. And this will create the, the so-called initial spatial eccentricities that will driven uh, the, the, the final state uh, momentum and isotropies through the dynamical response of hydrodynamics. So to have a good approximation, there's a linear uh, relation between flow and uh, the uh, initial condition eccentricities. So this eccentricity is defined uh, by this something like a Fourier transform of the energy density uh, over the Ozimus angle. But of course, for different orders of these eccentricities, uh, it's also weighted by uh, a power law radio function. So such call if, uh, so so the magnitude of this uh, eccentricity is very important because you see it directly affects the magnitude of some observable, the flow, and uh, theoretically we want to uh, use the grid sensitivity of flow on shear and bulk viscosity to extract their values. Therefore, any uncertainty you have in the initial condition eccentricity uh, will be propagated to your final interpretation of what's the credible region of shear and bulk, bulk viscosity you can extract phenomenologically. In fact, a different energy deposition formula controlled by the p-parameter gives you quite a lot of uncertainty in the eccentricity magnitude. For example, in this case, again, I vary p from minus one to one. Uh, and what's shown is the second order to fifth order eccentricity as function of centralities. So you see that there's quite notable initial condition uncertainty on epsilon two and epsilon four because they are really sensitive to the geometry effect. Uh, you change your weight depositing energy, you can change them uh, uh, drastically. Can you say, four, can you say yeah. which p-values end up at the top and at the bottom range of the shaded regions? Oh. Okay, that's, uh, I should label that, but uh, I cannot tell at once. Uh, so in this case, uh, for, the, for, the v, for the epsilon two, it's Glauber, which is P equals one, which is at the top, and KLN, which is close to P equals minus one, is at the bottom, and, but I don't know for the others. I think P equals to one is, uh, so for that uh, wood nuclear Glauber, it's the one produced less, eccentricity, but, but I should double check. Uh, maybe I can post uh, it. You're, you're right, I'm sorry, yes, I was wrong. Okay, uh, yes, then, uh, so different way of uh, energy deposition will give you very different epsilon two and four, but for epsilon three, it's, uh, uh, the variation is smaller because for this third order, uh, eccentricities, uh, the, the fluctuation plays more important role. Uh, so if you just focus on initial conditions, it's probably not so meaningful to talk about the magnitude of absolute n because uh, it, it will be convoluted with a dynamic evolution effect into the final, risk, uh, into the final observables. But at the level of initial condition, uh, 
you can you can talk about uh, the distribution or event by event distribution of this uh, 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 sorry uh, of these spatial eccentricities uh, because experimentally they can measure the event by event distribution of the flow harmonics and if you assume that this constant uh, doesn't fluctuate too much event by event so if you do this uh, self normalized ratio of v n over the average value of Vn and epsilon n over the average value of epsilon n and do the histogram. Uh, the dependencies on the Cn coefficient roughly can, cancels out. So it's meaningful, more meaningful to talk about this flow fluctuate, uh, sorry, this eccentricity distributions for initial conditions. So on the left, I, <coughs> I plotted the distribution for epsilon 2 <coughs> and epsilon 3. Again, you see that uh, the epsilon two, which comes from uh, mostly the geometry effect, is very sensitive to the shape of the distribution. is very sensitive to the p parameter that controls energy deposition law. While for epsilon three, where fluctuation dominates, <clears throat> you don't see much sensitivity to the p parameter. So up to this point, I've talked about the two of the event properties you can explore. Uh, are there any further questions? <clears throat>